for the first like maybe seven, eight months of the film, I was just collecting rejection letters from festivals. <laughs> In Bhutan, we don't even have a word for storytelling. And that's not because our culture is, uh, you know, uh, primitive. For us, it's so important that it doesn't even deserve a word. Oh, welcome to Film Companion. Thank you really for making the time to speak to me amidst a very busy festival for you. What have the past couple of days been like? Uh, it's been very hectic and not just a couple of days. It's been on since we had our world premiere in Telluride. Yeah. Uh, from Telluride all the way here, it's been very, very busy. Sometimes, uh, you know, so many lunch, breakfast, brunch meetings that back to back that I don't even have time to eat. <laughs> but it's been an exciting experience, you know, to experience the personal, intimate festival that is Telluride. Mm -hmm. And then to come here and experience the, the glitzy industry, commercial side of Toronto. So two wonderful uh, festivals back to back. Yeah, no, of course, you're here with the monk and the gun, but you're also here now as an Oscar-nominated filmmaker. Mm -hmm. How does that change the journey, the reception, the doors that open? Have you noticed any of oh, that? Oh, yes, definitely. Uh, you know, uh, with my previous film, which mm -hmm. was my first film, uh, Lunana Ayak in the Classroom, it was an incredible journey because I made that film all by myself. Uh, I had no investors. I had no uh, big producers, agents, sales agent, distribution. Uh, or even PR mm -hmm. and uh, when you start off a journey like that on your own it's difficult it's like swimming against the tide you could say for the first like maybe seven eight months of the film I was just collecting rejection letters from festivals <laughs> and uh, you know uh, after all that you get accepted into the first festival and they take a chance on you and then everything starts rolling you know um, I remember going to a uh, London Film Festival and I was called uh, for a press, meet the press. And there was not a single press to interview the, me or, you know, was interested in the film. Um, fast forward, uh, you know, a year later and I, there's New York Times, Wall Street Journal, BBC. High uh, five. <laughs> <laughs> CNN, uh, everyone, you know, LA Times, uh, Variety. So. It's been an incredible journey, but I wouldn't have it any other way because when you start from the bottom, you know, it's, you, it's a reality check, right? Yeah. And it keeps you grounded. It, it keeps, uh, you know, you connected, uh, you know, to the real art of storytelling, you know, the reason why I became a filmmaker in the first place. So with The Monk and the Gun, of course, the moment, uh, you know, it, it's mentioned that it's uh, my second film, there's really a lot of expectations. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even in Bhutan, you know, everyone just expects. And when I started shooting Uni, I told my cast and crew that every film is its own story. And I don't want to hear anything about Oscars. I don't want to think, hear anything about Dunana. This is just, uh, you know, on its own. And I'm trying to carry that on, but I can't help if the press keeps comparing me to the, the first yeah, film. Yeah, which is so. actually what I was coming to because a bunch of reviews are out for mm. The Monk and the Gun and the headlines scream stuff like surpasses Lunana. <laughs> and, well, of course, that is a relief, I'm sure, as a filmmaker mm. as well. Yes. How do you work past the pressure of that tag? Um, I, I keep, uh, you know, uh, I think, the, as I was saying earlier, the, the journey I had with Lunana, mm. the struggle, initial struggle I had, uh, you know, ha always questioning myself if it was worth it, if, if I, what I was doing was the right thing, that helps it, you know. And of course, uh, also being a practicing Buddhist, yeah. uh, that helps a lot, you know, to remind me of impermanence. Uh, we always, as Buddhists, we always thought that everything in life is like the coming together of a rainbow. You know, you have water, you have sunlight, something beautiful manifests in front of you, but it's fleeting, right? So I remind, I, always, that I keep that to my heart 
and as beautiful a rainbow as Lunana was, it's that's finished. And now I'm with the monk and the gun. And who knows, you know, I mean, sometimes the press themselves, maybe they get, they're overzealous and they get excited. Uh, but, you know, it's nice to hear the, the reviews that have come through. But I still take this one as well as a beautiful rainbow yeah. that I will appreciate, that I will, you know, get inspired by. But uh, it, that it's also fleeting. It's also fleeting. <laughs> Yeah, no, you, I've heard you say in an interview um, that oftentimes in film festivals like this, you almost are shy of calling yourself a filmmaker because you are still a student of yeah, cinema, yeah, yeah. for instance. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of aspiring filmmakers, young filmmakers do feel this social anxiety. How do you work through it? Um, I, you know, uh, as, as you were saying, I never went to film school. Uh, so for me, fil my film school has been on set, <laughs> making the films. Uh, so I take the whole experience as my film school. So, you know, uh, Lunana was a film school for me. Yeah. And The Monk and the Gun, then I looked at Lunana and I thought, okay, what are things that I, I want to do next? Things that interest me. Okay, Lunana was the story of this one character from the beginning till the end, it, it's his storyline. And, uh, you know, I was always drawn you know, to, you know, filmmakers like uh, Quentin Tarantino, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Pulp Fiction, Hateful Eight, those are some of my favorite films. So I said, well, what if I tried something like that with many different characters, many different storylines, all uh, messed up but coming together at the end. And that's what drew me to The Monk and the Gun. And I thought, okay, this is where I will learn to tell a story like that. And that was my, you know, you could say that was my film school, uh, but then also festivals. I feel like uh, the experience of festival is, you know, a quintessential part of a filmmaker. Mm. How you meet people, how you sell your ideas, how you, uh, the, the, how you interact with the audience, how you interact with the press, for mm -hmm. example. So, you know, with Lunana, you know, I realized that, you know, as a first time filmmaker, unknown, going to festivals like that and having no press interested in you, that's, that's part of the journey. And coming now to festivals like Telluride and Toronto and having, uh, you know, press on you, this uh, expectation, that's also part of it. So it's all an experience I'm learning. So. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about just um, not compromising on the authenticity of the story, even when you have to make a film on a budget. Because of course, with Bhutan, it's a very small film industry. Mm -hmm. Funds are hard to come yes, by. Yes. How do you go ahead and tell your story with conviction? even against the odds? Um, for me, as a filmmaker, um, you know, to be authentic yeah. to the characters and stories are so important. When I was uh, doing pre-production for Lunana, mm -hmm. um, many, many experienced filmmakers, you know, who I discussed the project with, they told me, they were like, wow, this is filmmaking. You're supposed to cheat, you know. Why do you want to make a school in the world's remotest school? Shoot it, you know, on that mountain top over there and just say that it's it's Lunana. But, you know, I, I think for me as a storyteller, uh, the stories I tell, I want to be really immersed in it. I want to feel that. And I told them that, well, I want all of us to live the journey, the life, go through the emotions as the protagonist and experience that. And that's why I was, you know, even though it was challenging, even though it became a lot ex more expensive to shoot in a mm. remote place like that, that's what pushed me for it. And even with the monk and the gun, you know, there, there were, uh, you know, different aspects where we could have made it easier. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think uh, uh, I like being authentic. It helps me and it helps uh, my cast as well. But how, are you, how do you stay authentic on a budget? Uh, well, sometimes it's cheaper to be authentic. <laughs> <laughs> Certain times it's cheaper, you know, um, uh, even, you know, uh, uh, I mean, we can uh, maybe shoot in a studio or something, but we decided to shoot on yeah. location in Bhutan. Uh, for example, uh, when I was in, at, in LA for the Oscars journey, many different producers came up to me and said, what's your next project? Mm -hmm. And I described the monk and the gun and there's an American character in it. And they said, well, you should cast this guy, you know, an A-list Hollywood star. He would be happy to work with you. You're an Oscar nominee. He's, uh, you know, spiritual. He likes doing independent films. You should ask him. And 
you know, going back to being authentic, I said, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. Because uh, if I do that, it will be about how this A-list star is making a film in Bhutan. So if this film was made with him, came to Toronto, it wouldn't be about Bhutan. It wouldn't be a film about Bhutan. It wouldn't be a film about Bhutan going through this transition and change. It will be about, oh, this big star has gone to Bhutan and made a film in Bhutan. Let's go watch his film. And I didn't want that, you know. And it became cheaper because I didn't have to pay his, uh, you know, multi-million dollar wage or the 80,000 something that I have to pay just to SAG in order to negotiate with him. So cheaper. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, it's really just so endearing to see the love with which you speak of Bhutan and it reminds me of the line in the film where the lady says, you are asking us to be rude. That's not who we are yes. as people. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the people of Bhutan. Who are they according to you and how um, do you see them? You know, everywhere I go around the world, you know, and I tell them, oh, my name is Pao and I come from Bhutan. I can guarantee that the next question that usually comes is, you must be very happy. So Bhutan around the world is known to be a happy country. And uh, that's, you know, that it looks like that's what the world think of us. But I tell them, I, I, I'm very frank. I say, uh, Bhutan is not a happy country. We are a very poor country. Uh, we are uh, one of the lesser developed countries in the world. And unfortunately, when you are a poor country living in a materialistically driven worldly world, that doesn't equal happiness, you know. So Bhutan has a lot of, uh, you know, unemployment. Our economy is suffering. There's a lot of uh, migration of Bhutanese away from Bhutan into uh, Australia, North America. It's expected like any other country. But I say, but I can say with total pride that I come from a country that strives to be happy, uh, unlike many countries in the world, you know. Um, uh, um, right from our Buddhist culture to our kings, that has been our, you could say, guiding light to ensure that all Bhutanese are happy. Mm -hmm. And um, that's who we are. We are a people and a nation that strives for happiness. But we believe that the happiness of the self is directly connected uh, to the cause and conditions around us. So, for example, we have rules which other countries might find very strange. For example, we believe that um, the forest percentage of our country should never drop below 75%. Because if the environment is good, that is directly connected to the happiness of the self. Um, in Telluride, I met Jimmy Chen, mm -hmm. uh, the director of uh, uh, Nyad and Free Solo and the executive producer of 14 Peaks. And I, I was joking with him and I said, Jimmy, you make films about man's conquest of the greatest mountains. And I said, I have a challenge for you now. Come to Bhutan and make a film about mountains that man are not allowed to climb. <laughs> so, you know, that is who we are as Bhutanese, you know, to put it in a nutshell. Uh, we are a very, a very small nation with so much to share with the rest of the world. And yeah. I hope that films can do that. No, and, and you in, in, in such a big way did that with just the Oscar nomination journey. I mean, you tell the story about how when you submitted Lunana to the Oscars, Bhutan wasn't even no, a drop no. down on the website. So you have really changed history in, in, a, in, a, in a big way. I hope so, you know, um, when I submitted uh, Lunana to the Oscars, I really had no expectations. Um, I did it more to create a space for Bhutan and I really do mean it. You know, uh, uh, as you were saying, Bhutan wasn't even there in the Oscar database. The Zongkha, our national language, wasn't even there in the language database. So they had to update everything to accommodate our uh, submission and I'm grateful they did that. And, uh, you know, um, with, without any PR, without any marketing, without any distributor, we got shortlisted. And that's when kind of things fell in place and then we, we, we took it more seriously and we were able to get the nomination. And it has done so much to inspire a whole generation of Bhutanese. Uh, because, uh, you know, storytelling is so important for the Bhutanese culture. Um, I'm not sure how it is. Uh, in, uh, in, in Hindi or, mm -hmm. you know, the Indian languages. But in Bhutan, we don't even have a word for storytelling. And that's not because our culture is, uh, you know, uh, primitive or our 
uh, language vocabulary doesn't have you know richness mm -hmm. it's because for us it's so important that it doesn't even deserve a word so oh, incredible in english i'll be like sneha tell me a story in our language sneha please untie a knot for me so the act of telling a story has that purpose of freeing liberating untying you know that's that's you know so for bhutanese when we have uh, storytelling as such an integral part of a society uh, Lunana's Oscar nomination gives younger Bhutanese the dare to dream, to untie knots at a, at a global platform, you know, to reach with the, beyond our borders. But also, Sneha, I was, uh, when I was at uh, the Dolby Theatre uh, two years ago, uh, and we were having this director's Q&A, and I was with all the members of the Academy, uh, I told them, I was very frank, I said, uh, you know, um, one year ago, I was up in Lunana, in the glacial mountains, like 5,000 meters above sea level. We had one camera and we had solar batteries to charge that camera. Yeah. I hadn't taken a shower in two months. I said, at that time, if someone told me, hey, Pao, you know, go for it. In a year and a half, you'll be in LA nominated for an Oscar. I would have laughed it off. And I said, but you have made this possible. And I said, the journey of Lunana gives hope to the thousands of filmmakers, thousands of artists, thousands of untires of knots all over the world who don't have the support, who don't have the funds, who are struggling to tell their story and many times questioning themselves, is it worth it? Am I doing the right thing? You know, the filmmakers like myself who have collected a stack of film festival rejection letters, uh, you know, who have entered a hall to be interviewed by press only to be told no one's interested in you you know for all those filmmakers and storytellers lunana's journey you know they look upon it and they say hey if lunana can make it if pao can do this why not us you know it inspires them and i was telling them uh, the academy members that that you have given hope and inspiration to you know so many filmmakers yeah well pao you talk about the stack of rejection letters but you also today have your entire family with you doing the festival route. I mean, what a joy to give this to your family, to yes. just come along with you and experience <laughs> the magic of the movies. Uh, for me, you know, um, I feel like uh, childhood can mm -hmm. come only once. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it does, of course. And we come from a family of artists. Uh, you know, uh, my wife uh, produces my films, but she's also a theater actress. Uh, my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, they're all in the theater business. My daughter acts in my films and plays. So for them, this is what we do. You Film know? school. Yeah, and um, I feel like experiencing all this is uh, as important as going to school, you know. Uh, and I mean, how often can someone go from the world's remotest classroom to the Oscars? <laughs> it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I want them to experience that with me. So they travel with me for the Oscars. They, they travel with me even for the festivals with this film. So Yeah. No, and finally, before I let you go, uh, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> and all the street cred that you're enjoying right now, how are you going to use it to just enable more artists from Bhutan to, like you said, untie knots? Well, um, you know, I, I, I am a filmmaker who has had this unique journey mm -hmm. and I share this journey, you know, not just with Bhutanese, but, uh, you know, uh, with other artists I meet, you know, um, I, w I was talking last time to, uh, 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 during the TIFF uh, events, I was uh, sitting with a very talented singer and uh, she was telling me about her struggles, about how, you know, she, she is so in love with singing and, she, but, and you know, but she doesn't know if anyone is listening to her voice. And I tell her, I was like, hey, look, this is what I went through, you know. You will never know if this is what your heart calls for, then you stay true to it. You keep doing it, keep doing it. And one day, you know, the, the, the rain and the sun will hit each other at an angle and the rainbow will manifest. And that's the story I tell her, but also, you know, my, I, I hope that my journey my rainbow can, you know, also inspire uh, the, the, the Bhutanese back in Bhutan, you know. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Thank you for doing what you do and thank you for thank the you, good Sina. fight because 
it's really given hope thank to you, so Sneha. many. Thank you for uh, talking to me. Before we end, I just want to thank you and Film Companion for this opportunity. Uh, because, you know, as a Bhutanese filmmaker, I, I, I go for these events and I see, oh, there's the French pavilion. Oh, there's the South Korean pavilion. But there's never a Bhutanese pavilion uh, because we, we're so small, right? And uh, it's very sweet. Every time I go to different festivals and different uh, ceremonies, it's always, uh, you know, um, India that says, oh, let's, let's include him as well. So I'm very, very grateful for this. Even when I went for the Oscars, um, um, uh, Priyanka Chopra, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, included me in her, in her party uh, for the Oscar nominees. And that really touched me. And even this time, you know, to have Film Companion uh, ask me about my journey. It, yes, it means a lot it's to me. It's our absolute so, thank privilege you. to include you. Thank, thank you, you for being one of us. <laughs> thank you. Hello, this is Pao Chuning Dorji uh, from the Kingdom of Bhutan. I'm the director of The Monk and the Gun here at the Toronto International Film Festival. I was on Film Companion with Sneha. If you like this interview, please subscribe for more. Thank you.